Did you all celebrate Diwali? I hope you're all happy today. Okay? Are you all ready for our today's class? Very good. Students, in our last class, what did we learn? We learned something about. We learned a poem which was written by. Who was the poet? Very good. Elizabeth. Coursework. And what was the title of the poem? Swift Things Are Beautiful. Things Are Beautiful by Elizabeth Coatsworth. Swift things are beautiful. Swallows and deer and lightning that falls bright veined and clear. Rivers and meteors, wind in the wheat, the strong withered horse, the runner's sure feet. And slow things are beautiful. The closing of day, the pause of the wave that curves downward to spray, the ember that crumbles, the opening flower, and the ox that moves on in the quiet of power. What does it mean by swift? Swift means speed, quick, rapid. Okay, swift. A name of a car is swift, right? Swift means speed. Okay. And the title of this poem is taken from the first line of the poem. Because it is not, this poem is not only talking about swift things. It also talks about things which are running slowly. Am I right? The first stanza is all about things are all about Speed and quick and the second stanza is about the slow process. Is that clear students? Okay. And the poet used so many imageries in this poem. Am I right? How the lightning looks like. The lightning is compared with blood veins and the imageries. Imageries means we can Imagine or in our mind eyes we could visualize the picture or the sounds which we could hear automatically. We could imagine the sound. We could imagine the visual images. That is what called imagery. Already we have learned about this in the writing skill that is poetry writing. And in this poem the poet Elizabeth Coastwood talks more about things or more about animals or the process which are taking place very quickly. And also she talks more about the things which are happening slowly yet they are beautiful. This is what we have learned in the poem. Swift things are beautiful. Once again shall we read the poem students? So, all of you take your textbook, take your English textbook and take page number 58. Take page number 58. Shall we all read it together? Okay. Swift things are beautiful. Read it along with me students. Already we have read the poem twice or thrice. So now you can read it with me, alright? Swift things are beautiful. Swallows and deer and lightning that falls. Bright, veined and clear. Rivers and meteors. Wind in the wheat. The strong withered horse. The runner's sure feet. And slow things are beautiful. The closing of day, the pulse of the wave that curves downward to spray, the ember that crumbles, the opening flower, and the ox that moves on in the quiet of power. And here 
what the poet is saying the poet is saying that swallow the small flying bird the deer the horse lightning rivers meteors wind in the wheat roar and also the runners feet these are the things which are happening quickly within a minute so it is not a slow process these are all running De deers are running not slowly but swiftly and the swallow birds are flying not slowly but swiftly horse strong withered horse are running not slowly but swiftly then the runners feet for a running competition if they run slowly will they win no they are unable to win the match win the trophy so they have to run swiftly and wind in the wheat rivers flowing rivers meteors what is meant by meteors meteors are shooting stars so these are all things happening in a quick rapid manner and she also talks about slow things they are also looking beautiful what are the slow process here mentioned in this spell the first is closing of day in our last class in our previous class we have seen the sunset lively am i right next pause of the waves the waves are coming slowly and the pause the curves there in the wave also looks beautiful and the ox which are walking on the field or walking on the road on the pathway it also looks beautiful and the ember ember it's a piece of coal we can use it as a fuel right so that ember is emerging or is emitting fire and that also looks beautiful so these are the things which are happening slowly so here the point is saying elizabeth corsford is trying to say that everything around us is beautiful but we are not observing everything around us we are not appreciating the beauty of sun of moon of everything around us are we appreciating the beauty no we have no time to look at the beauty of the environment am i right how many of you are will wake up at 6 or 6:30 and will observe the sun how it looks like in the morning it looks very beautiful the sun rises in the east so if you look at the east side you will you can observe the beauty of the sky as well as the sun and in the evening will you ever did you ever look at the evening sky or the sun or the sunset it looks beautiful the rivers the streams everything around us looks beautiful but we are not looking at them and we are not ready to appreciate them because we have no time to look at the beauty of nature because we are very busy to study our lessons to earn money to run behind money to watch television to eat to sleep but not to appreciate the beauty of nature so here the point is compelling or the point is advising us to appreciate the beauty of nature because everything around us is beautiful whether it is a slow or fast or swift process or swift thing but it is beautiful this is what the message conveyed by the poet elizabeth corsford and here she used the poetic device that is imagery while reading the poem we can 
imagine or visualize images will come across our mind so that is what called imagery this is the poetic device the poet elizabeth costwood used in her poem swift things are beautiful what is mean by swift swift speed quick all right now take page number 59 take page number 59 students okay comprehension arrange the following in increasing order of speed number them from 1 to 5 so we have to arrange the given things animals name of a river meteor is there something we have to arrange it in an order from increasing order of speed from slow to quick all right shall we do the first one is river second meteor third deer fourth an opening flower and the next is runner so what will be the first one that is from slow process to speed and quick process the first one is opening flower it's a slow process the number 1 is the an opening flower number 2 a river when comparing with meteor deer and runner rivers are running a little bit slower than the deer and meteor and also a runner okay river is number Two, third, a runner. Third, a runner. The fourth is a deer. Four is a deer. Deer will run faster than a runner. Okay. Next, the last one is a meteor. Meteor will come from the heavenly body and it come. quickly within a fraction of second we cannot imagine the speed of a meteor which reaches the earth okay so this is the fastest of all the all these okay the first is an opening flower second a river third a runner fourth a deer and fifth is meteor all right students next explore language imagery already we have learned already we knew that what is imagery in a poem am i right students okay now let me read this as you already know imagery is the use of descriptive language which helps represent objects and ideas more effectively and create pictures in the reader's mind so these are descriptive languages which are creating pictures in our mind in the reader's mind while reading the poem we could imagine some pictures that is visual image if we if, if we could hear some sound then it is sound imagery okay now swift things are beautiful is rich in examples of what swift and slow phenomenon in nature look like these images add to our emotional response to the poem as in the line and lightning that falls bright veined and clear so they have given one such examples of imagery here that is an lightning that falls bright veined and clear so the lightning we all have seen lightning but the imagery they add here is the lightning looks like a blood veined it's a, it looks like a vein in our body what is the use of veins veins are transforming blood 
it? They are blood vessels. Blood vessels. So here, bright, veined and clear. The lightning looks like bright veins. Okay. So this is an imagery here. Next, you have learnt about visual imagery till now. Till now, we have learnt about visual imagery. But there are so many varieties and types of imageries. Poets also use imagery to talk about the other senses. So they have given some types of imageries which are resting or which talks about the sensory images or senses. The first is visual imagery. Visual imagery with the words we can imagine a picture through our eyes. Auditory imagery through the words, through the words in the poem we could hear something. Okay, the light, the thunder sound. If they have written something about thunder, then we could hear automatically through our imagination we could hear the thunder sound. That is auditory imagery. Next, olfactory imagery. Olfactory imagery talks about smell. If the poem talks about the sweets, we prepare for festival, something like chicken gravy or fried rice or anything you like the most, some food item or the smell of a flower, of saffron, of lavender. So we could, with those descriptive words, we could feel a beautiful aroma, beautiful smell that is olfactory imagery. Next, gestur, gestatory imagery. That talks about the taste. Already I told you. At first I talked about chicken gravy. We could smell as well as we could taste something. Ice cream or cake or chocolate. So with these words we could taste something. Right? In our imagination. So that is Gustatory imagery. Next is tactile imagery. Tactile imagery talks about touch. The touch, of a gentle touch of a mother. So through these words we could feel the sense of sense and that is tactile imagery. Did you understand students? What are the types of imagery? Visual imagery, olfact visual imagery, is for a visual image, I mean for eyes. We could sight a picture or image. Next, auditory is for hearing, olfactory, smelling, gustatory, tasting and tactile is touching. A sense, a feeling of sense. Okay. Next, match the sentence in column A to the kind of imagery they create in column B. So they have given five sentences or few phrases and these phrases are about imagery. It might be a visual imagery or olfactory imagery or tactile imagery or gestatory imagery or auditory imagery. We have to match those column A with B. Are you all ready students? Okay. The room was dark as night. The room was dark as night. So it was a dark night. It looks like a dark night. That room was completely dark. Now you can create a visual image about a dark room. It is very dark. It looks like night. So it is visual imagery. Next, the first one is room was dark as night. The answer for this is third one, visual imagery. Next, my sister whispered a lullaby into my ears. My sister whispered a lullaby. 
already we have learned a beautiful poem about a lullaby right so here lullaby it's a imagery for our ears for hearing that is hearing imagery so the answer is auditory imagery lullaby on our ears my sister whispered a lullaby into my ears it is auditory imagery the answer is auditory this table has very sharp corners this table has very sharp corners and it is tactile imagery the corners of the table are very sharp which means if we touch the corner of a table we could identify it is very sharp right so it is tactile imagery this orange is very sour it is the taste of orange so it is gustatory imagery very good she whiffed the aroma of melted butter aroma smell and so it is olfactory imagery did you all complete it students okay next here are some quaint and loud things take turns to use imagery to describe them to your partner now as you are at home you have to do it by your own we cannot complete it as group all right the first the wind at twilight you have to find it out what type of imagery is this wind at twilight is wind at twilight is tactile a lullaby auditory butterfly landing on a flower butterfly landing on a flower is imagery i'm sorry visual imagery okay so the rest you can do it by your own will you all do it students okay so today we have completed the textbook exercises for the swift things are beautiful i hope you all have noted down and try to do the last textbook exercise that is just now i did i read for you and we have done the first three and the rest of the three you can do it by your own will you students i hope you all have understood our today's class try to do the textbook exercise by your own if you have any doubts you can ask me see you all in the next class students in the next class we are going to learn a new fresh topic until take care thank you